question 5.1 says write down the equation of the asymptotes of f. So f is a hyperbola and we know that a typical hyperbola has vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. And to work out the equation of those you look at this part over here and this part over here. So this part tells us that the graph has moved two places upwards. So what that would actually look like if I had to draw this out for us, if the graph has moved two places upwards, then it would look something like that and it would be y equals to 2. So that is our first answer. And then what does this do to a graph? Some students still think that when you have a minus it moves the graph left. But remember that it's the opposite and so it would actually move it three places to the right. And so x would be equal to 3 is our second answer. So that's the answer for 5.1. 5.2 determine the x-intercept of f. So to find an x-intercept we make y 0. So we're going to say 0 is equal to 4 over x minus 3 plus 2. I would take the 2 over to the left hand side. Now we need a common denominator. So the common denominator is x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply this x minus 3 up to the top, but I always put it in a bracket like that. A lot of students don't, and it leads to silly mistakes. That would then give us negative 2x plus 6 equals to 4, and then negative 2x equals to negative 2, and then x would be equal to 1. So when they say the x-intercept, remember that that is going to be not just 1, but you must say that the x is 1, and the y is 0. And I'm going to fill that on the graph just in case we have to draw this later. Oh, here we go. Sketch the graphs. Okay, so we'll have to draw it later. So I'm just going to go put in that x-intercept that we just found, which is over here at 1 and 0. Next question, determine the y-intercept of f. So to find the y-intercept, you make x 0. So we'll, we'll make x 0, or let's just say y equals to 4 over 0 minus 3 plus 2. I would then type that on the calculator, and that's going to give us 2 thirds. So the y-intercept will be x is 0 and y is 2 thirds. And so 2 thirds would be somewhere over here. And so that's going to be the coordinates 0 and 2 thirds. And so now they say sketch the graph of f and g. So f we know we've got all of its points already. So that's just going to be a hyperbola that's going to do something like that. And then of course we should put another, the other half over here, making sure that it doesn't cross the asymptotes. And notice we also have the asymptotes. And then question g, now that's a straight line. So a straight line you just need to find an x and a y intercept. So to find the x-intercept, you make y 0. So we could say 0 is equal to x plus 2, and you'd work out that x equals to negative 2. So where's that? That's somewhere over here. So minus 2 and 0. And then the y-intercept, you make x 0. And so that's going to be y equals to 0 plus 2, and that's going to give us 2. I'll actually do this one in a different color, so I'll do this in black, so it's going to be there and there. And always remember to label the coordinates, and now we can draw a straight line through that. Question 5.5. Calculate the x points, or the coordinates, of the points of intersection. Whenever they ask you where two graphs intersect, which is these places over here, and over here, so we should expect two answers. What you do is you make the two equations equal to each other because they are going into each other. So you say 4 over x minus 3 plus 2 equals to x plus 2. And I mean, there's multiple ways you could carry on from here, but I'm going to first simplify it as much as possible. So I'm going to take the 2 over, so you're going to end up with plus 2 minus 2, and those are going to cancel. So you just get that. Then you need a common denominator, which is x minus 3. So what that means is you're going to multiply this x minus 3 up to the top, but always remember to use a bracket. Makes it much easier. And then we can multiply it out, and so you're going to end up with x squared minus 3x. And now it's a case of getting your trinomial. 
You can use the quadratic formula if you wanted to, but this one will factorize quite nicely as x minus 4 and x plus 1. And so therefore your final answers would be x equals to 4 or x equals to minus 1. Now you don't have to find the y values because they've only asked for x. And those answers that we got make sense because this is x equals to 4 and this would be x equals to minus 1. Question 5.6. If x is less than 3, determine the values of x for which this... Okay, this is a mouthful. But guys, when you see these types of questions, don't panic. Have a look here. They're saying if x is less than 3... Okay, so where is x less than 3? x is less than 3 for all of this. Okay, or maybe let's cross out this. We don't want that. So the stuff that's left, so x is less than 3 is all of this stuff over here. So they're saying, okay, if we're looking at that part of the graph only, for which values of x is this? Now what you should have realized is that that is this. So it's pretty much saying, where is that graph smaller than this graph? Can you see it? So it's actually just saying, where is f of x smaller than g of x? So it's saying, where is f of x underneath? g of x. So where is the hyperbola, the blue one, beneath the black graph? Can you see that it is this area over here? Because in that area the black graph is on top, but if you go to this area here, then all of a sudden can you see that the blue graph is on top of the black graph? Actually I've decided to zoom in so you guys can have a much better idea. So Focus on this point over here. Now, if you look to the right of that point, look at this. Which graph is on top? The black graph is on top. If you go to the left of that point, then which graph is on top? Then the blue graph is on top. Now, we are looking for areas where the black graph is on top. And so that's, remember we said that that's this area here. And so that is when x is bigger then whatever it is over here, and so x must be bigger than minus 1. So we can say that x must be bigger than minus 1, but then it must be smaller than 3 because they've asked us to go smaller than 3. Now if you prefer interval notation, you would say x is an element going from minus 1 up to 3. And then the last one, number 5.7. This one's quite interesting. So they say that we've got this random line which cuts the graph f, which is the blue one, at 1 and 0. So it cuts it at 1 and 0, which is this point over here. And so they've said that that's p. So we'll label this p. They said that it cuts at p and q, and it says right on the coordinates of q. So it's some straight line, which we don't know what it looks like, but it's going to cut the blue graph in two places, at p and q, and they want to know what would q be. But remember guys, the way to work out where two graphs cut each other is to make them equal. So we're going to make this equal to this one, which is x minus 1. And then what I would do is I would simplify it a little bit. So I'll take the 2 over, become x minus 3. And then what happens is we need a common denominator. Now that common denominator is x minus 3, so I'm going to multiply that up to the top. Um, or you could multiply to each of them separately. So guys, just think about that carefully. You can multiply to the x, and then you can multiply to the minus 3, or you can multiply to both of them at the same time. I'm going to do the separate approach, because that's what most students prefer. So it would look like this, minus 3 times x minus 3. And so that's going to give us 4 equals to x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. And then we can simplify. I've just decided to move it down here for space. And so we can simplify that and it's going to give us 4 equals to x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then you take the 4 over. And so we get x 0 equals to x squared minus 6x plus 5. This factorizes quite nicely. So it'll be x minus... 5 and x minus 1. So the answers are 1 or x equals to 5. But they've already told us that x equals to 1. They've told us that that is the coordinates of p. So q 
would be the other one. And so Q has an X value of five, but now they've asked us for the coordinates. So we also need the Y value. To find the Y value, you plug the X into any one of the equations that we are using. So either you can use the line that we are using, or you can use the equation for F. Now I'm gonna use the straight line because it's just a little bit easier. So we can say Y equals to um, X minus one, and then X is five. And so the y value is 4. And so the coordinates will be when x is 5, y is 4. And so that's the end of this question.